all of the power, his first goal then is the left and the opposition. And in a psychological way, all of those that he had cultivated, in a sense, and now he wanted to, to repress, send to jail, to exile, execute, uh, or make disappear. The second objective was the armed forces, because he had to control the, those that were the real leaders, and slowly and systematically he eliminates them, by giving them an embassy, by uh, uh, putting them away uh, physically. One of the most popular uh, coup plotters was General Bonilla, who died in a helicopter accident. Interestingly enough, uh, the French engineers that came of the company that of the helicopter that had had the accident came to investigate that. The two uh, experts died in a helicopter accident also. After that, there were no more investigations, of course. <laughs> uh, and so he eliminated them. And then the third issue was, how do I transform Chile? And here comes the pragmatic attitude of Pinochet as well. And that is, uh, what did you do about the economy? A, an economy that had been in chaos during Allende, um, uh, with hyperinflation and uh, with, with the problems of, of an economy running out of control, as it was Chile's in 1973. Well, he was a statist, a nationalist, but he did not have a, a plan. In fact, he had named an old buddy of his who was an accountant as Minister of the Economy. And soon enough, they realized that that wasn't, work, that wasn't working. So this uh, group of young technocrats was studied at the University of Chicago um, and supported by the head of the Navy, who was, in my view, the real, uh, the, the real coup uh, responsible, the person responsible of, uh, behind the coup, the, the head of the Navy, uh, supports these young technocrats so-called the Chicago Boys, and Pinochet does not have any alternative but to accept a plan, because he doesn't have a plan. The only thing he does is say, plan B, and he surrounds himself by a group of, of uh, military men who are status-oriented, but are lightweights compared to these MAs and PhDs uh, from Chicago, who begin then with the support of uh, Milton Friedman, who goes to Chile to apply the strategy of uh, shock therapy. I remember, as if it was today, when, when the, uh, Milton Friedman went to Chile and they asked him, what about this shock therapy? Well, you have to cut inflation by the root and do it hard. But wouldn't it be better if somebody asked him, like, grab your process? And he says, well, if you have to cut the tail of a dog, you do it in just one chop. You don't do it in several chops. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was something that was very contrary to Pinochet's instinct, but the pragmatic man sees in these technocrats uh, the solution, perhaps, to get the, the economy out. By that time in, in Chile, uh, many of us had gone through so many difficult experiences. Um, uh, I had been almost arrested in, in an episode that uh, I narrate in a book and that was uh, very interestingly um, discussed in, in New York City <coughs> on, on a dinner that we had at uh, Barbara Walter's house. She, she made a, a dinner in my honor. And uh, at the time of dessert, she has a very large round table where about 18 people or 20 people are. And she, she invited people from the press, politics, movies, etc. And she said, I just saw a movie, she says, uh, uh, <clears throat> called a Match Point, which is about the role of luck or fate in your life, changing it one way or the other. And I have an idea, she says, I'd like to ask each and every one of you a situation in your life where luck changed your life. And don't tell me when you met your spouse, when <laughs> your daughter or son was born, because that's out. It has to be something more interesting than simply that. <laughs> and some stories really interesting begin to, to, to be told. And it comes to me, I was to her right, so I was the last one. And I said, well, all I can think is, I said, after the coup in Chile, when the military came to pick me up. 
and the street where my mother lived, where I was hiding at that time, um, was blocked by what I thought was like a regiment, because there were many, many trucks and heavily armed uh, troops in, in, in uh, combat uh, gear. And I saw out of the window two friends of mine in a jeep, handcuffed. So I knew they were coming for me because they had picked them up. So, it, And I told my wife, uh, you know, I'm going to go to jail. I cannot escape. I'm absolutely outgunned and uh, outnumbered. And I cannot escape through the roof because I, what could happen to you? So, uh, you know, I put on my jacket and waited there. And uh, she paced up and down with her American passport and said, well, we have to do something. And I said, call Ted Kennedy. And that was the only thing that came up to my mind and find out whether they're going to take me. And uh, a lot of movement outside, 10 minutes of seeing an eternity, and all of a sudden, they all leave. And I was truly puzzled. I thought, what the heck happened here? And about two or three minutes later, very, a, soft, a very soft knock on the door, and it was our neighbor, Doña Alicia, who had known me grown since I was a kid, and she says, they were coming for you. They asked me where you live. They came to my house and not to yours, and I didn't tell them that you live next door. They had gone to the wrong door. Yeah. They had gone to the wrong door, and this woman who had seen me grow uh, did not give me up. Um, so when I told this in the Barbara Walters uh, dinner, she raised her hands and she said, you won, you won, you won. Okay, you won. <laughs> and the story uh, was quite, uh, had a, a, a very complicated element from an emotional standpoint because those two people that were there, I, I, I saw one of them uh, about five years later in Mexico. He was uh, uh, an exile. And, and uh, when he saw me, when we embraced, he cried and he said, you know, he said that the only good thing in all those bad moments when we were arrested was when they were, went to pick you up and you were on the top of the list. And uh, the captain was so enraged about the bad military intelligence he'd gotten because he, he didn't bring you back. And when we saw them go in the wrong door, we couldn't believe it. And it was the only happy moment that we had in that awful period. And because they, they spent many, many months at the National Stadium, they were tortured, mock executions, and that would have been what happened to me. So at that moment uh, uh, um, in my life, uh, I, I, uh, I thought that I should follow, finally, my wife's advice and, and leave Chile as, as we did and we went to to Denver. I should have come to Wisconsin because, frankly, <laughs> Madison is an impressive place, and even though I like the mountains, uh, living near the water is much nicer. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, at least I, I had another perspective, even though it was a forced uh, experience uh, living out, out in, in Chile, uh, out of Chile. Um, I did my PhD, I became leader of the Socialist Party outside Chile in the network that we, that we had. A lot of funny situations as well as sad ones that happened at that time. I remember that one time friends of mine ended up going to see uh, Gaddafi because Gaddafi was supposed to <laughs> help the solidarity movement. <laughs> And uh, after about three days of a conference and all that, comes the big interview with Gaddafi. And Gaddafi says, okay, so choose your weapons. What do you mean, choose your weapons? So the, the, our friends who were there said, we thought that you would finance some of the solidarity committees so in Europe and, and all that. He said, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I will help you. But what do you want? Uh, you want RPGs? You want bazookas? You want... Uh, so his help was choose your weapons, and uh, they came out uh, empty-handed, <laughs> and some Chileans uh, went to Libya to this meeting with Gaddafi, and they took wine as present, which was thrown in the airport, uh, you know, and smashed into the walls. Uh, I mean, there were some aspects of our experience that was uh, comic uh, and, and sad at the same time. 